words can sometimes fail. This is something that um, many people in power count on. They don't want words to be all that important. And of course, what's happening in Gaza, words fail because it can't be described. The inhumanity of the silence from American media. Words fail. I'm familiar with the problem. Just as words fail to be able to answer, to engage, catastrophe of the way the people were told that Rafa would be safe in the south of Gaza only now to be intense at the mercy of a swarm of tanks and bomber planes and spy missions and targeted assassinations and drones in a wilding spree. I'm familiar with these tactics because I, in the 80s, had to engage the Jeffman Corporation, who are very close to Netanyahu. Jeffman employed an Israeli, employed King Crimson whiz kids like Yusu Endor of Senegal to position what later became known as cancel culture. They claimed to be from Amnesty International and engaged in biological warfare, torture, rape, domestic terror, unspeakable acts. Words fail. Sometimes, however, it's good to keep in mind that sometimes trickery fails too. For example, as a precaution, Reagan pretended to be shot. Hollywood let the Axis pretend they were friendly. As Humphrey Bogart says in Casablanca, I let Ingram Bergman pretend. She was one of the first UAF, UFA performers of Goebbels in Germany. She even took the persona of my friend Martha Gellhorn, one of Ellen and Roosevelt's best friends, if not her best friend, and for whom the bell tolls. Reagan pretended he wasn't a fascist. Because the good people in Topeka didn't want to be told about that. And the same reason Mitt Rodney tried to cancel TikTok. They don't want to know. And this empowers the sadistic, terrible mind of the assassins, too. Because make no mistake, Yoko Ono is out to brainwash people in a counter-brainwash syndicate. A counter-brainwash syndicate that says it's okay to use black market pornography on nine-year-olds. It's okay to demand that someone show a soldier a fortune magazine that they don't want children to see. It's okay to demand that through terrorism. This is her mind. She's criminally insane. And her argument is, oh, but they're in denial. See, free speech is important, but it's really not exactly sacred. More important is mindfulness, when and where to say certain things. You don't go into a senior citizen's home where people are elderly, vulnerable, and start talking like Johnny Rotten course, 
The cancel culture took a precaution. They tried to brainwash me. And having evidence of brainwash was one of the precautions when it came to Reagan, too. They said that I was brainwashed into being spooked by authoritarian militarists. And they characterized me as a coward for an unmanly, not lacking in machoism and so forth. Insufficiently feminazi. And so on. I mean, they came up with all sorts of doozies. They were King Crimson's whiz kids, like used to endure Senegal, working for the Jaffa Corporation. But a very good proof of my contention that Reagan took precautions is the symbol I found of him next to a bust of Hitler with the U.S. over the swastika. In between scenes, goes by too fast to see on a film directed by Raul Walsh. It's clearly a fascist statement, and he's sitting right there next to the bust under the U.S. over the swastika. It even says, rather us. And you can show this to somebody and insist that they admit what it is, and they say, will say, well, I didn't know that. Well, that's true. They didn't. I'm not trying to frame anybody as, not, as knowing something they didn't know. Just because it's there doesn't, and it's intended to be there, doesn't mean that they knew. It goes by too fast to see it. You have to stop the film and look at it frame by frame to find it. But it, I didn't Photoshop it either. It's there. It's real. It's a signature from the Wizard of Oz. So they took precautions is the point. And this proof that they took precautions. But they used brainwashing. Burson is named from The Exorcist. They tried an enemy within experiment to change the personality from within. And more than that, they used what was known as selective distractor hypnosis from the Gurdjieff Society. You've heard of Kreskin's ESP. I even know one of these people wrote at the end of the day who just came in and handed me a note and said, I think you understand me. All day, they've been using selective distractor hypnosis. I know what happened to Mackenzie Shirilla. And I believe that there are people in the Department of Corrections at Ohio State presence, you know, too. She was manipulated. She's a victim of these people. Wadenmaker, who is in the Tanya, who Jeff and gangster, Zionist in Pittsburgh, was Attica State Prison psychiatrist and my next door neighbor. That's a powerful psychiatrist. Robert Fripp, works with the Gurdjieff Society, with studio systems like Clint Eastwood. When they turn on Houdini, the Kreskin, the Wispensky, the Gurdjieff cult stuff, you are at their mercy. It's a form of prison system. Now, Waters is one of the most villainous people who's ever walked the earth. He proclaims himself pro-Palestinian. But let's be real. The Israelis wilding at food trucks, lighting them on fire, throwing flour everywhere, smashing bottles of children's formula, are behaving like Pink Floyd's The Wall. They are the ones who he has tutored all this time. Don't be fooled. He uses the Palestinian flag as a diversion the way he used Lenin as a diversion. Now, the Orpheus mechanics, as I call them, were people who understood and subscribed to the mental illness that John Lennon perpetuated with things like glass on you, peel back the layers, and so on. The Alice in Wonderland of psychodrama that he was into. And they planted, they sowed the seeds, and then it was important that they convince everybody that he was really shot. That was a big trick, a real con job. 
but all the evidence shows that's what they had been up to all along. It was a villainous plan to avenge Hitler and call it the spirit, Casper, the friendly fascist. And the victims of AIDS were set like a bowling ball down the alley of discovery, spiritual waking. Remember when that meant something? Wow, look, pride apart, it has infinite meaning. Gail Burson wrote that in mockery and appears on the cover in symbolism of a Robert Fripp record from 1979. How could that be? The script originated in Westmoreland County where close confederate of Yoko Ono's and conspiracy theory, the film. Mel Gibson's father lived with the people who wrote it. They're all the same little team. George Romero's daughter, Kyra, was mentioned in the script. She surely knew Debbie Brooks, whose brother locked me out of a church. Amanda Harcourt set Rose up with Sean Brooks, who locked me out of a church after she deserted me on a mission for Roger Waters. All of these people are the same little gangsters. They're all the same little gang, but they want to have a real Mel Gibson um, moral of the story at the end. Remember in Mad Max, when a woman looks at him and says, I was wrong about you. Oh, isn't that touching? The whiz kid of King Crimson, you to endure after torture me, would look at me and say, I was wrong about you, queer ball. Isn't that touching? 